Hi, right, how you doing all? It's a um, it's a Sunday afternoon. I don't know what date it is, 20, 21st, something like that. And I've got a rare couple of hours to just kind of go out, chill, and walk me little ferret of a dog. I thought I'd give myself a little challenge, because um, as everyone knows, I take my camera everywhere with me. I always shoot wide. I love shooting wide. I've got into a habit now of shooting with my um, my Nissi F450 mil, which is, is it, yeah, F450 mil, it's 50 mil wide, which is like, woof. I don't know what, what that is in degrees. It's got to be 180. It's got to be about 150 degree, 140 degree. I don't know. I'm just guessing. It's bloody wide. And I, I just love shooting, love shooting wide. In fact, if I could afford it, I'd probably sell all my lenses and get the new Canon 15 to 35, the RF mount 1.8, I think it is. I forget now, 2.8. Um, but I think it's about two and a half grand or something stupid like that. So today I thought I'd give myself a bit of a challenge. I've put on the old school 50mm 1.8. I think this is probably one of Canon's cheapest lenses, 50mm. So like I said earlier, I like to shoot really wide, which is like pff, woof. Well, this thing shoots like that. And I'm going to go for a walk in a woodland. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge, really. But there is one good thing with this. It shoots at 1.8, which means... The aperture of one of 1.8 when i shoot landscapes obviously i like to get i i kind of normally aim to get a lot of the scene in focus so i shoot a kind of f8 f12 f14 f16 so i've got a vast amount in focus from front from foreground to background but this lens even though it's cheap as chips i say cheap as chips i don't know what it is 60 70 80 quid i suppose it's all plastic the closest focus and distance is like two foot which is not really much cop but it's 50 mil but yeah like i said the one good thing is it's got an aperture of 1.8 which means you can blow the background out of focus you know i can if the camera's here and i'm taking a picture of my finger my finger will be in focus but from sort of a few feet behind it will drop off so whatever you're photographing really pops in the scene so um yeah i thought i'd just give it a try i'm out walking the little rat here Go, go! Yeah, we're going for a walk, aren't we? So, um, gonna say hello, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Good girl, yeah. So we're just gonna go for a walk in the woods. I don't know how this video's gonna go. I'm just gonna take the 50 mil. I haven't even brought any of my wide angle lenses. So I might end up being grumpy in about 10 minutes because um, 50 mil just is not my thing. So we're gonna have a walk about. I'm probably gonna shoot everything at 1.8. Nice bokeh, shallow depth of field smooth buttery background as good as this thing can give it it's not the best 50 mil lens on the planet she in the wood we're going to walk at a place called maple is it maple is it called maple here in gampton it's a nice bit of woodland because it's a bright blue sky i was going to head down by the coast with a big stopper but um it's just a bright blue sky and i thought i'd give myself a challenge and see if i could do anything with a, with a 50 mil 1.8 when i used to shoot weddings i loved this it was absolutely great get a nice portrait of someone Blow the background out nice and smooth. People think I'm mad because I look like I'm talking to myself. So, um, yeah, see you in the woods. We'll go for a walk. Don't know where this is going to go and uh, get some shots with this old dinosaur. This is obviously my Canon R. This is the RF adapter. So my Canon EF lens can fit onto my Canon R. So that adapter there goes from RF to EF. Works brilliantly. It's like seamlessly but um in fact listen to this how noisy is that sounds like a horse and car Have a little walk about and uh, get the old 50 mil out and see if we can find anything. If this old deer would keep up with me, come on, you granny. Come on, let's go. Good girl. What I'm kind of looking for is little pockets of light. See these little pockets? Obviously, the sun's coming from, from up there down. I'm looking, you can see these little pockets of light. If I can find a flower, a bluebell or something, a, a point of interest that's caught in this pocket of light because it's being illuminated almost like it's got its own flash gun on it. I'll be able to take a picture of it, blow the background out because the background's darker and it will just pop. That's the plan. 
See all the little pockets of light on each side? Find one with a nice little, nice little flower. I've been in this woodland now, we've been walking for probably... God, how do you hold so much piss, dog? We've been in the woodland now for, I don't know, a quarter of an hour. My camera's still on my back, just because I've got the 50mm lens on. I just haven't seen anything. I'm so used to shooting wide, especially when you've got the sun coming down through the trees. So I need to change the old noggin. It's good though, make you think, make you, make you look at shots differently, I think. So, um, but I haven't seen anything yet. Nice, just nice to be out, walk about, to be honest. Yeah, normally when we, I walk Coco here most three, three or four times a week. I bring me camera with me every time. Literally, as soon as I get in here, I've got pictures. Put the 50 mil on, struggling big time. Come on, girl. All right, this is probably the bit of the woodland now. If I'm gonna get a picture of any uh, bluebells or anything, this is probably the spot. It's the last little um, track through the woodland before you get to um, the National Trust Gardens. It's lush, isn't it? I was gonna show you what 1.8 does. It's a bit manky, but I'm gonna shoot this at 1.8. Crazy, isn't it? Silky smooth background. The only thing I have noticed though, because I'm stopping down to 1.8, the actual bit that's supposed to be in focus isn't very sharp, so I've gone up to f2, which still blows the background out. That's the problem with a cheap lens. Yeah, because I'm shooting on the Canon EOS R and I've got 30 million pixels to play with. Ooh, blimey. Normally, if I'm going to take a picture of a flower on a scene like this, I'll put the flower in the left hand or the right hand side so you can see the rest, rest of the scene. And because I'm putting the flower to the left of the frame or the right of the frame where, where, the, where the lens isn't very sharp, it's making the, what is in focus soft. But because I'm shooting on the EOS R and I've got 30 million pixels to play with, next time I frame a picture, I'm gonna put the flower smack bang in the middle where the lens is at its sharpest, and then I'm gonna crop it and put the flower to the left or the right hand side. That's the good thing about having more megapixels. Quite like them leaves actually. Let's have a look, see what this looks like. Quite like these sweet chestnut leaves. Might be quite nice with all that blown out and these quite sharp. Look how shallow the depth of field is across the leaf, let alone the background. I've got the points of the leaf in focus but even part of the leaf is, is out of focus, let alone the background. How cool is that? 1.f2, can shoot 1.8 because it's crap, but yeah. Little pocket of light, look. One down there. How cool was that? <laughs> there was even a fly on top of the bluebell. I'm not sure that's come out like, I think it's nice. I'm just slowly discovering that close up with this cheap 50 mil lens at 1.8 F2. Okay, brilliant. Nice blows, nice buttery background, but the actual uh, point of focus is pretty bad. Now I know why people spend two, three, four thousand pounds on a 1.2 L series. 50 mil lens <laughs> but it's good fun still making me think i'm shooting in manual because the only thing i want perfectly exposed is the actual flower itself if i shoot in aperture value or time and value who shoots in time and value never have um if i shoot in aperture value it will try and balance the exposure across the whole scene whereas the photography i'm doing with this 50 mil 1.8 to f2 is i want just the flower to be in focus and it's only the flower that i want to be perfectly exposed because I want the background to be all dark and out of focus so shooting in manual basically ISO, it's quite light in here anyway but ISO 100 f2 and then I'll just adjust my shutter speed use my histogram a little bit 
but basically by eye and just make sure the flower's got a nice bit of exposure. I'm not worried about the background, just concentrate all about the flower in the foreground or the middle of the frame because obviously the light's up and down in here. Yeah, it's quite fun actually. Makes me think a little bit, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Come on, dear. <laughs> Come on. Not the most interesting video I know, but I was going out for a walk with this little one and I thought I'd chuck the 50 mil on and just see if I could get some uh, some nice little pictures, really. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to sit on my deck in with my MacBook, I'm going to put the brolly up, I'm going to pour myself a doom bar and I'm going to quickly edit these pictures. Not going to be much editing, to be honest. What I am going to do is crop them so they're 16 by 9, so they fill the frames. You can see how good the shots look, I suppose. Cheers for getting this far. Cheers for watching. Have a good Sunday. See you in the next vid. Can I say bye? Yeah. Yeah, he's lush. Let's go home and have a drink, shall we? Go home and have a beer. Cheers. Bye.